Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. For all integers a and b, a plus b is an integer. Now in this series, we are using a list of 10 axioms for the real number system. And I'll leave that list of axioms in the description below. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to be using axioms 1, 2, 4, and 5. Now, axioms 1 and 2 are just the commutative and associative laws. Axiom 4 tells us about the real number 0. And we have, for all real numbers x, x plus 0 is equal to x. Axiom 5 tells us every real number has a negative. And we have, for all real numbers x, x plus the negative x is equal to 0. Now, a property about negatives that we've proven is that, for all real numbers x, the negative of negative x is equal to x. So, we also have axiom 6, which tells us about the real number 1. It says that 1 is distinct from 0, and has the property that, for all real numbers x, 1 times x is equal to x. Okay, now, in our real number system, we have defined the positive integers as a subset of the real numbers. And the way we defined it was we first defined a special type of subset of real numbers called an inductive set. And we defined it as follows. Let i be a subset of the real numbers. We say i is an inductive set if 1 is an element of i, and for all elements n in i, we have that n plus 1 is an element of i. For example, the set of real numbers itself is an inductive set. Now, we define the positive integers as the set of real numbers which belong to every inductive set. And then we showed that the set of positive integers itself is an inductive set, meaning the set of positive integers is a subset of the real numbers with the property that 1 is a positive integer, and for all positive integers n, n plus 1 is a positive integer. We've also proven that the principle of mathematical induction holds for the positive integers, which essentially tells us if we're trying to prove a statement p regarding positive integers, well, to prove that p holds for all positive integers, we just have to prove p holds for 1, and we have to prove for all positive integers n. If p holds for n, then p holds for n plus 1. If we can prove these two things, well then that implies for all positive integers n, p holds. And next, we defined the negative integers as follows. The set of negative integers is the set of real numbers n with the property that negative n is a positive integer. And we've proven that the negative integers are closed under addition. So for all negative integers a and b, a plus b is a negative integer. And also, we define the integers as the set of real numbers, which are positive integers, negative integers, or zero. So pretty much just the union of these three sets. Okay, so now we want to prove that the integers are closed under addition. Now, before we prove this, we are first going to prove two preliminary results. The first result is as follows. We're going to prove for all integers n, n plus 1 is an integer. Now, it's pretty clear that we can show this if n is a positive integer or if n is equal to 0. Because if n is a positive integer, then since the positive integers is an inductive set, it follows that n plus 1 is a positive integer. The positive integer is a subset of the integers, so n plus 1 is an integer. And also, if n is equal to 0, then n plus 1 is going to be equal to 1, and 1 is a positive integer, therefore 1 is an integer. So, the case that's more important to discuss here is if n is a negative integer. Now, to prove that this is going to be true for negative integers, we're actually going to prove for all positive integers n, negative n plus 1 is an integer. And we're going to prove this using induction. So let's start with the base case. In the base case, we're trying to prove that this is true in the case where n is equal to 1. So we want to prove negative 1 plus 1 is an integer. 
Now notice, by the commutative law, negative 1 plus 1 is just 1 plus negative 1. But then, by axiom 5, any real number plus its negative is 0. And 0 is an integer. So this shows negative 1 plus 1 is an integer. So this completes the base case. Now let's move on to the induction step. In the induction step, we give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer n, and we assume that this is true for that arbitrary positive integer n. The whole goal of the induction step is to show that this is also true for n plus 1. So we want to show that the negative of n plus 1 plus 1 is an integer. Well, let's write out the negative of n plus 1 plus 1. Now, a result that we proved when we proved that the negative integers are closed under addition was the fact that for all real numbers, a and b, the negative of a plus b is equal to the negative of a plus the negative of b. So applying this result here, we have that the negative of n plus 1 is equal to the negative of n plus the negative of 1. And then by the associative law, axiom 2, we can move the parentheses around negative 1 plus 1. But then, from what we showed above, we have negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is just negative n plus 0. And by axiom 4, negative n plus 0 is negative n. Now, n is a positive integer. And the claim is negative n is a negative integer. And to show this, well, according to the definition of the negative integers, if we take n to be negative n, well, we know negative n is a real number, but is negative of negative n a positive integer? Well, we know, according to this result, that negative of negative n is equal to n. So since n is a positive integer, negative of negative n is a positive integer. So this requirement is satisfied. This tells us that negative n satisfies the requirement to be an element of the negative integers. So negative n is a negative integer. And the ne negative integers is a subset of the integers. So this shows the negative of n plus 1 plus 1 is an integer. And that was the whole goal of the induction step. So this completes the induction step. So by induction, we have shown for all positive integers n, negative n plus 1 is an integer. Now, we're going to show that star is true. Now, since we're trying to prove a statement about all integers, let's give ourselves an arbitrary integer. I'll call it n again. The whole goal is to show that n plus 1 is an integer. And to show that, we're going to split this up into three cases. Either n is a positive integer, n is equal to 0, or n is a negative integer. Let's first consider the case n is a positive integer. Well, if n is a positive integer, but since the positive integers is an inductive set, it follows that n plus 1 is a positive integer. And the positive integers is a subset of the integers, so this shows n plus 1 is an integer. So we're done. This completes the case n is a positive integer. Now let's consider the case where n is equal to 0. Well, if n is equal to 0, then n plus 1 is equal to 0 plus 1. And 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 0. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. And we know that 1 is a positive integer. And the positive integers is a subset of the integers. So this shows n plus 1 is an integer. And we're done. So we've covered the case n is a positive integer. We've covered the case n is equal to 0. The last case left is what if n is a negative integer? If n is a negative integer, well then according to the definition of the negative integers, n is a real number with the property that negative n is a positive integer. So, negative n is a positive integer. Now, according to the result that we've just proven by induction, this statement works for every positive integer. So, in particular, it must work for the positive integer negative n. So, replacing n with negative n, we have that the negative of negative n plus 1 is an integer. negative of negative n is equal to n, so this is saying n plus 1 is an integer. So we're done. But what this shows is, no matter what integer n we have, if n is a positive integer, n is equal to 0, or if n is a negative integer, we always have that n plus 1 is an integer. So 
We have proven that star is true. So this completes the proof. So now we're going to prove another preliminary result. We're going to prove for all integers a and all positive integers b, a plus b is an integer. Okay, so to prove this, let's first consider an arbitrary integer a. And from here, we are going to proceed by induction on b. So we're going to prove for all positive integers b, a plus b is an integer. So let's start with the base case. In the base case, we're trying to show that this is true in the case where b is equal to 1. So we want to show that a plus 1 is an integer. But this immediately follows from star, because if we take n to be a, we have a plus 1 is an integer. So this completes the base case. Now let's move on to the induction step. Now in the induction step, we give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer b. And we assume that this is true for that arbitrary positive integer b. From here, the whole goal is to show that this is also true for b plus 1. So we want to show that a plus b plus 1 is an integer. Now notice, by axiom 2, the associative law, we can move the parentheses around a plus b, but then applying star, if we replace n with a plus b, well then we have a plus b plus 1 is an integer. So this shows that a plus b plus 1 is an integer, which is the whole goal of the induction set. So this closes the induction. So by induction, we have proven for all positive integers b, a plus b is an integer. And we have proven this given an arbitrary integer a. Since a was arbitrary, we have proven for all integers a, and for all positive integers b, a plus b is an integer. So we have proven precisely star star. So this completes the proof. So now let's move on to proving the main theorem. The start of the proof, since we're trying to prove a saying about every two integers, we're giving ourselves two arbitrary integers, call them a and b. From here, we want to show that a plus b is an integer. And to do that, we're going to split this up into several cases. First of all, what happens if a is a positive integer? Well, since b is an integer, we can replace a with b. Since a is a positive integer, we can replace b with a. So in that case, we have b plus a is an integer. But by the commutative law, axiom 1, b plus a is equal to a plus b. So that covers the case where a is a positive integer. So then what happens if b is a positive integer? If b is a positive integer, well then we'll apply star star again. Since a is an integer, we'll take a to be a. Since b is a positive integer, we'll take b to be b. Well, in that case, we have a plus b is an integer. So this covers the case where b is a positive integer. So then what happens if both a and b are negative integers? If this happens, well, we know that the negative integers are closed under addition. So a plus b is a negative integer. And the negative integers is a subset of the integers by definition. So this shows a plus b is an integer, so we're done. This covers the case where a and b are both negative integers. And actually, there's only two cases left that we have to check. One case is where a is equal to 0, the other case is b is equal to 0. What happens if a is equal to 0? If a is equal to 0, well then a plus b is equal to 0 plus b, which is equal to b plus 0, which is equal to b. And b is an integer. And therefore, a plus b is an integer, and we're done. So that covers the case a is equal to 0. On the other hand, if b is equal to 0, then a plus b is a plus 0, a plus 0 is equal to a, and a is an integer. So this shows a plus b is an integer, and so we're done. So at this point, we have considered five cases. One case is that a is a positive integer, another case is that b is a positive integer, 
Another case is that A and B are both negative integers. Another case is that A is equal to zero. And another case is that B is equal to zero. And in all five of those cases, we have shown that A plus B is an integer. But does this cover all possible cases? Well, actually it does. Because what, what is every single possible case? Well, since A is an integer, that tells us A is either positive, zero, or negative. Since B is an integer, that tells us B is either positive, zero, or negative. So we have nine different combinations we can consider, and they are as follows. So this is all different combinations. Now we've shown if A is a positive integer, then A plus B is an integer. So that covers these three cases. We've also shown if B is a positive integer, then A plus B is an integer. So that covers these two cases. We've also shown if A and B are both negative integers, then A plus B is an integer. So that covers this case. We've shown if A is equal to zero, then A plus B is an integer. So that covers these two cases. And finally, we've shown if B is equal to zero, then A plus B is an integer. So that covers this case. So we've covered all possibilities of what A and B can be. So no matter what, given any two integers A and B, it will follow that A plus B is an integer. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.